My toilet, I can't. What does this mean? All from Twitter blue users. Yes, we knew all along, sadly. Average Twitter blue user be like, unfortunately, as a learning language module, I cannot process image-based requests. You have reached the number of API tokens you are able to request today. Please try again tomorrow or visit our page at chatgpt.com slash store to purchase more bandwidth allowance. You know, I think we'll try this. <laughs> Surprised you don't have more yard work anecdotes? You know what? I kind of do have one. So I have fully settled into suburban life. Except for last weekend, the previous three weekends, I raked the leaves every Saturday. Sunday through Friday, Trees shake, the leaves fall off. I let them pile up. Then on Saturday morning, I rake the leaves, put them into the organics bin, and I look at the, I look at my outdoor area and I say, ah, it looks nice. And what has made it even better is that my neighbor right next to me had been on vacation. So I've been watching their leaves pile up for like a month. I wake up, I look out the window, couple of scattered leaves on mine, enough to be autumnal, but not like, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna screw up the concrete or something like that. I look at theirs and it's just piled up like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Like you're gonna crash into that to get a secret hidden videotape or something. And I've been like, I'm a god, I'm a genius. So I've been, every Saturday, I was raking leaves for like 90 minutes, right? They came home yesterday, and then like an hour after they came home, three dudes with diesel leaf blowers came, and in like six minutes, blew all of their leaves into one big pile, put it into a garbage can, and then drove off, and their shit is looking pristine. <laughs> they, I apologize, I was not familiar with your game. You had it all figured out. Now, I enjoyed being outside, getting a little exercise, and, you know, do it. You, you know, as Cicero said, a man only needs two things a library and a garden. Library, of course, is YouTube, skibbity toilet, and the garden is raking the leaves. That being said, I was like, damn, that would have saved me a lot of time. You already know where we're going on this one. Yes, sir. I don't like these. These are not good units. This is a good unit. Yeah, raking leaves kind of... I don't know if relaxing is the word I would use. Maybe it is, you know? It's kind of like... I don't know. It's as close as I come to, like, uh, meditation. Outside with the earbuds in. You, it's like, I, I finally understand like power wash simulator. You go out and the leaves are like 100%. And then every time you rake the leaves, like every single rake takes it down like 0.25%. So after 400 rakes, you're like, oh, look at that. And then you get the satisfaction. You're like, I did it. They call it Atheist Church. The kids are calling it Atheist Church. It's when you go outside and you toil even though you don't have to and you find some meaning on this mixed up blue marble. Kids are getting so high on this shit they're volunteering at the local soup kitchen on Sundays. Are your children toiling? Not yet. My child is not toiling. But I do try to do like 10 minutes of crayon practice with her every day. Try to get her to do some tracing practice. And she fights me on it. She's part of the alpha generation, you know? 
She's like, I would rather just play my singing monsters. And I'm like, we're going to set like a five minute timer and we're just we're going to take the crayon and we're going to trace like the letter A. She does like one letter A and I'm like, that's amazing. It's the best A I've ever seen. And then she does like one arm of the second A and she's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm like, I know, get used to it. I would rather be looking at my phone right now, too, than trying to force you to learn the alphabet, even though you're going to learn the alphabet anyway. But you got to fill your time with something, okay? How about something good for a change? How about something half decent for a change? How about a, how about a unit that gets the blood pumping? We won anyway. It's turn four, brother. That's pretty true. It has been 20 minutes, but it is only turn four. What is this? These dog shit animals, bro. Mr. Beast thumbnail or I will be very angry. Something like that. How's that? <laughs> He's holding the orb. Last one to hold on to this orb I found wins a million dollars. It's a HP Lovecraft novel. But when he was, I don't watch Mr. Beast videos. When he was buried alive, did he? How did, where, where did the poop go? I saw the tweet that was like, where did the poop go? But it's a good question. Where did the poop go? The dude was in a coffin for seven days. He said he didn't poop. I don't buy that, Mr. Beast. Your average viewer who's like 13 years old might buy it. I don't believe he didn't poop for seven days. It doesn't make sense. You really think he was in there? I think he was in there. I mean, you don't have any evidence that he wasn't in there. And I don't have any evidence that he wasn't in there. He said he was in there. I'm going to believe him. Seven days? That seems doable to me. I'm not saying a YouTuber would never lie to me. I'm kind of saying, you know, Mr. Beast is already on top. It's like accusing Hikaru Nakamura of cheating in chess. Like, bro, what did, it, it, he's got nothing to gain and everything to lose. I just, I'm not saying it's impossible. It just doesn't pass the smell test without some rigorous scientific and statistical testing, okay? That has never stopped anyone. This, you don't have evidence, man. You don't have evidence. Listen, I'm not saying you got to hand it to Mr. Beast. I'm just saying we can't be like he didn't really do it without, you know, some, if you saw him at, down at the damn Wawa when he was supposed to be buried, that's one thing. Impeta Wawa? <laughs> We're assuming based on common sense. I would just spend the week in the coffin, but I would not be coy about it. I would tell you where the poop went. I would be like, I pooped three times and like I wore a diaper. And then when I pooped in the diaper, I took the diaper off and threw it in the corner. They'd be like, didn't that stink? I'd be like, yeah, but I was in the coffin for seven days. Like I got bigger problems. I'm in the damn coffin. Yeah, it smelled bad. It was like, it should be so lucky to smell bad. So I have some, something interesting to remark upon in my brain for seven days of solitary confinement.
I had the poo in there to stay sane. That's what I always say about Sisyphus, man. <laughs> if they really wanted to punish him, they should take away the, the poop. Did I tell you my niece was roasting Mr. Beast? She was saying, like, she tells her friends at school that she has a famous YouTuber uncle. And then I'm like, oh, they're probably disappointed when they find out it's not Mr. Beast. And then she was like, I don't like Mr. Beast. I don't like his videos and his chocolate bars cost like 10 freaking dollars. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I had no idea. It runs deep, bro. She's spitting. You got to release budget chocolate bars for the people? Nah, man. The dollar store's already got that covered. You ever go out for Halloween trick-or-treating and you, like, expect to get a Kit Kat and then they hand you, like, some kind of... It's a one nanometer thick chocolate bar wrapped in, like, paper that has, like, a clip art picture of a lion on it or something like that? That's the... <laughs> That's the stuff right there. That's me? No, I'm giving out. I don't even remember what we gave out. Smarties and Kit Kats and Aero Bars, which are the worst. I apologize for that. But the, the packs come with the Aero Bars. So what do you want me to do? You have to take a leech. Arrows go so hard. POV, you are from the United Kingdom. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. That's true, I am. You didn't even have to tell me. I already knew. If you are an arrow enjoyer, 100% you're British. People from England always be like, oh, have you ever had Rolo? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, I don't need to apologize. It's just a statement, but like, you know. Oh, you ever had Jersey milk? Jersey, bro. Bro, please. I know we're talking about Snickers and Wunderbar, Butterfinger, Crunchy, Mars bars. You ever have a Jersey milk? Well, what's inside of it? Nothing, bro. It's just chocolate. What the hell? You ever have a, an arrowroot digestive biscuit? Come on. What the fuck you mean baked beans is the number one? Oh, man. It gets me every time. It does, doesn't it? Three, three, three. Me, 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 me. Smith will suffice. Me, 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 me. Oh! Hello, Drew. Hello, me, me. Did you know Thanos was only 26 when he assembled all six Infinity Gems? Shit's gonna make me cry. Bro should have been at the club. You win this. Dude, you'd kill on Tumblr? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. What's your least like chocolate bar that you do like? Okay, what, sorry. What, what's the least like chocolate bar that you do like? Um, I don't eat a lot of chocolate bars. I prefer the salty snacks. But I would say that the gimme is bounty. I'm a coconut enjoyer. And bounty is a heavily coconutted chocolate bar. I probably would not purchase it from the store, but if, if there were some bounties around and someone was like, do you want these? I don't like coconut. I would be like, sign me up, bro. We don't need a slug on this team. It's all leech camel as far as the eye can see. Oh, that's the stuff. I 
I don't think that answers the question. Well, I don't know. I, I don't eat that much chocolate, so I don't have strong chocolate opinions, I think. Is the, I'm not sure if that's the answer you want, but it's the, the answer that exists in reality. Someone did say eat more, and that's true. Do, do they have eat more in the United States? Eat more is like a, a quote-unquote diet chocolate bar that is basically made of like dried fruit, nuts, and chocolate. And it it is kind of like eating like a, a sawdust board, but it's something, it's kind of fucking good. It should not taste good, but it is kind of tasty. Want to eat more chocolate bar. It's a chocolate bar made by Hershey. Consists of dark toffee, peanuts, and chocolate. It was created in Canada on July 1st, 1987. The shit was created on Canada Day. Doesn't get more patriotic than that. Wikipedia article doesn't even have a picture. Listen. How was this shit always oh, acquired on Canada Day? It was invented in like 1906. An early 1930s contest. This is the most Canadian sentence I've ever read. An early 1930s contest to name the chocolate bar. The winning name was Eat More. Take me back, man. Life was just simpler back then. Was won by Angus B. MacDonald of New Waterford, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. His prize was an Art Deco style clock fashioned to look like a measuring tape. Holy, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> His prize was an Art Deco clock fashioned to look like a measuring tape. It is chewy and comes in a yellow wrapper. It is also rectangular and flat and stretches when eaten. That is true. A caramel version was also launched in 1995, which replaced the dark toffee of the original with caramel of a similar consistency. It was the same size and shape as the original Eat More, but it came in a copper-colored wrapper. It has since been discontinued. There's not a whole lot of information on the Eat More chocolate bar. I would say Eat More is to chocolate bars as um, munchos are to potato chips. It's like they're definitely a potato chip the same way Eat More is definitely... A, a chocolate bar, but it's like unlike any other entrant in the category. I love Munchos too, man. I don't know what it's all about. Like, I don't, I don't know what happened at the Munchos factory if there was like an accident and that's how they turned out the way they turned out, but I do like them. Kind of like eating salted air. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. I could see that. Stop talking about munchos like they exist. Bro, it's like the ultimate gas station food. I haven't had a muncho in a long time. Do Americans have crispers, by the way? Or is that a... Because Canada is, is weird in one way only. And that's basically that our culture is distinctly American, but for snacks and confectionaries, our lineage is inherited from the United Kingdom. So sometimes I'll be talking to Americans and I'll be like, bro, you ever have a Mars bar? And they're like, I've never heard of it. And I'm like, are you insane? It's the second most popular chocolate bar in the world. And then you find out that it's like uh, only in Canada and England or something. We have Mars here. All right, never mind. I must have been thinking of something else. <laughs> you don't have crispers, apparently. And that's blowing my mind. Because crispers are freaking tasty, bro. I like the way we got this set up, honestly. What is a crisper? They are... They're basically... Like a snack cracker, but it's a little closer to a potato chip. And they got like a little wave on them. They got like a, they look like a flag waving in the wind. Like Lay's. It's a different sort of wave than a Lay's, but 
Wait, 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 we're going back to the Mars comment here. Apparently the U.S. doesn't have the same kind of Mars bars. Your Mars bars are what our Milky Ways are. Our Mars bars are chocolate and then inside is like extruded. It's called nougat. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what it's made of. Some kind of like synthetic marzipan or something. That's a Three Musketeers. That shit is crazy, man. I gotta eat some more chocolate bars just for research. By the way, I recognize Chad is made of different individuals, okay? I do want to say... Anytime I talk about bananas, people are like, I don't eat them. There's too much sugar. Then we're doing a candy bar tier list. And people are like, you ain't, ain't, you ain't eating a hundred grand bar, mate. You ain't eating a... What are you doing with your life? You ain't eating a hundred grand bar. That's what I mean when I say the barrier to entry for like a healthy food. People are... They, same thing with sparkling water. Two LaCroix a day? That's a little excessive. Meanwhile, hey, it's uh, the divisional... It's game five of the divisionals in MLB. Let's have nine cores lights. Motherfuckers Googling, can I have two Coke Zeros with lunch? The squad can work. Something good. Something good. Didn't hit the mongoose. That's good enough. I think it's too late for a shark to fit. Oh no, his straw men are British now. <laughs> Holy cow, this guy's mole pilled. Unfortunately, they changed the ox, so it's bad now. But, I, you know, I guess you didn't keep up on the meta. They keep changing the animals that have been in the game for three and a half years. Oh, you didn't see the patch notes? Thoughts on chocolate assortments as gifts? I will say you do you. Some people like it, some people don't. If you know what, uh, if you know what the, the person you're giving the gift to is into, then go crazy, by all means. Yeah, it's okay, I didn't want my melon armor anyway. Um, I don't like receiving junk food that I wouldn't buy for myself as a gift because I am going to eat it. But if I'm gonna eat junk food, I would rather buy my own junk food so that I'm using my limited junk food budget on stuff that brings me pleasure more than like mindlessly eating like a bunch of chocolate covered almonds dutifully because someone I respect bought it for me as like a gift. So for me personally, I would, I would rather not receive chocolate as a gift. Because I don't like chocolate as much as most people. Now, it, honestly, what's crazy is if you rolled up and you're like, here's your Christmas gift. It's two big bags of Lay's dill pickle chips. I would be like, thank you so much. You know me very well. But if you give me like a tin of like biscotti or something like that and you're like this biscotti is really good I'm like I'm gonna eat it it probably is pretty good but I'm not gonna enjoy it as much as I would enjoy the Cool Ranch Doritos but some people like it I am reaching that age where like whenever I go to someone's house and they have one of those like royal Danish blue tins with the sugar cookies in it I'm like fuck yes fuck yes bro <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, that's fair game. You don't even have to ask. If they've got that displayed on the coffee table, it's good to go. Now, what's the best 
that you open it up and it's just a bunch of fucking thimbles and you're like, ah, shit. <laughs> Best shape, in my opinion, is the, the pretzel shape with the dusted sugar, but... That's just my, my personal... I'll take anything in the pack, but that's my favorite. Then you find out like every single cookie is like three sticks of butter. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. I was wondering why it tasted so good. The rectangle? Listen, I'm a big rectangle enjoyer too. I was going to say that's like my second favorite piece. But to be honest with you, I think I might only say that because that's like... Those are the only two pieces I remember. <laughs> I think I only remember the, the pretzel and the rectangle. What else they got? Holy cow, they're not playing around. Flat donut. I don't think I know that one. They got the little spiral. Spiral. How about you don't kill me? You ever think about that? What if what if we just let me get a, a ten piece instead? The fuck these teams are so good. We we were goaded earlier, man. What happened? Wait a minute. We're still goaded. We're still goaded. Never mind. We're back. I don't have to complain yet. Thoughts on cinnamon sugar? I'm for it. Absolutely for it. No, I don't want to kill the monkey. <laughs> mm. See anything useful? Not really. Thoughts on garlic salt? I'm for it. I'm, it, uh, many things culinarily I'm for, and I'll explain to you why. It's a very simple uh, process for me. It's because they taste good. People really aren't in the business of popularizing foods that taste bad, and I support that because I like things that taste good. There's very few things on a restaurant menu where I'm like, that actively tastes horrible. Depends on the cuisine. Gingerbread houses. Now you got me. Now you got me something controversial. Because I don't really like a gingerbread house. Making a gingerbread house is fun. Eating candy while you make the gingerbread house is fun. But then storing a gingerbread house in your house for like two or three extra weeks until Christmas is just sort of weird. Cause like, you're like, am I really going to break my house to eat some stale gingerbread and like mints? I don't think so. And then I think like we were making ginger, I just, I, maybe there's some PTSD here, but we were making gingerbread houses in school like every year. And I feel like we used a hot glue gun to glue some of this stuff when icing didn't suffice. Tomo, get out of the courts. And I feel like anytime I look at a gingerbread house, I'm kind of like tasting hot glue. Like our teacher was probably like, don't eat the gingerbread house. You use glue on it. But we were all like, bro, that's a, that's a mint. You really think I'm just not going to eat a mint just because it's made of, it's glued with plastic? It's got to be a fondant gun. I did not grow up knowing what a fondant gun is. It certainly was not a fondant gun. I think we want... Replace melon with coconut. But it's a tough decision. I don't make this decision lightly. It was not a hot glue gun. I'm telling you that you weren't fucking alive when it happened. And I was there, and it was a hot glue gun. because we put the fucking translucent sticks into the back of it. 
The same ones we used when we needed to glue something hotly. I'm scared of this snake. Oh, you motherfuckers. Really? After everything we've been through? Never mind! The 10 piece. What time is it anyway? Holy cow, it's going to be a long stream today. <laughs> We've only been live for an hour and a half. That glue stick probably feels good as fuck when you slide it into the glue gun. Listen, that's like a plus two. I'll play, you should put that one on Twitter. It is like a Chibli joke. How about a silly husband? Ban that chatter? What are you talking about? Is it illegal to be funny? Did I accidentally end up creating Saturday Night Live? Hello, Justin, by the way. Plus two, plus two. They hate it. They hate SNL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a bad start. One of us. You ever realize how insane it is that, like, due to the nature of... Tomo, come on, man. Due to the nature of like the media landscape, some of the funniest people on planet Earth are relegated to being like a, a bit player in a 6 out of 10 Judd Apatow movie where they play like the wife of the tertiary character. They play like the wife of the fat guy from the group of friends. You're really telling me, you know, she's, she's the funniest person in her zip code. Went to school in Chicago. Interned at the Second City for 11 years. Is a podcast superstar. And her most famous film role of all time is like dental assistant in Funny People. We got to give them some better roles, man. We got to bring comedy back. Here. Go. Get out of get. Oh, you got to get out of here. I'm sorry. Tomo, can you go can you go sit next to Santa Claus, please? Can you go sit next to Santa? Can you go sit sit next to Santa, okay? Because here's the thing, I it I wouldn't mind if you sat on my lap, okay? But as soon as I pick you up, you're like, I wanna be down. Case in point. So now you're out here, you're being a liability in and around the courts, okay? And I, I can't stand for that. It's very distracting, plus potentially dangerous for both of us, okay? You see yourself? I think he's having an episode right now. He just saw himself in the camera and he is realizing he's a cat for the first time. Look at it. Look at it! <laughs> don't hide from who you are, Norman! I don't want to kill Spider-Man. I don't want to kill Spider-Man. Cut his head off, Norman! Become that which you are. It's your destiny. Maybe I can cut his head off a little bit. Anyway. It's round three. We're getting our ass beat. Never mind. We just got a ten piece. Sure. Still pretty good. A lot of Spider-Man 1 references. Favorite part of Spider-Man 1? I would have to say when... The Green Goblin captures Spider-Man by shooting uh, gas in his face and whispering, Sleep. Still can't believe they fired Toby as Spider-Man. Toby, uh, Michael Scott voice. 
Toby, nobody here at the office likes you and you're divorced. So nobody at home likes you either. You think that's how they broke the news? I think it went down that way. Don't worry, Toby's the Scranton Strangler. Shut, nobody's... Brother, we're in the damn climate crisis right now. You're d d pulling out Jar Darth Jar Jar-esque memes about the office in here. Let's get serious as a society. This is getting ridiculous, you know? We're, we're in a lot of trouble. He might be though? Yeah, sure, and maybe Mr. Beast didn't get in the coffin, okay? Like, it does seem a little silly that he pretended not to poop for seven days. I know I'm the biggest proponent of like, if someone says something that fake, it must be real because they couldn't expect us to believe that lie. But like, I don't believe that the man did not poop for seven days. And even if he didn't, that's true. What did he do with the piss? <laughs> There's no way he didn't piss for seven days. I will say I have gone seven days without pooping, but I couldn't do it on command. What happened? I, I moved to South Korea for a year and like the, the day of travel, like the 30 hours of travel, you're all messed up. You know, you're having breakfast at 2 a.m. And then right after that, it's like midnight snack. You go over the international date line and they're like, here's a second breakfast. And you're like, I've only been up for four hours, but it's been 27 hours since I left. Like you're, and then like you, there's anxiety and you're in an unfamiliar environment. I was, I, I wasn't constipated. I didn't feel like I had to poop. But after like three or four days, I was like, this is crazy. I haven't pooped yet. And then like one day I pooped and I was back on the, you know, I've got rhythm, I've got sunshine, who could ask for anything more? Stop distracting me at work. We need a leech. Basically, the only thing that matters is getting a leech. Sorry, my friend. Oh! Go one stream without mentioning poop challenge, difficulty impossible. How about like, go one day without being grossed out by some shit that you do every day challenge. Difficulty degree, fucking easy. I do it every day. Ooh, poop and piss. So disgusting. Hang on, I gotta go to the bathroom really quick. Anytime anybody tells me they're going to the bathroom, I don't think that they're like going into another dimension and it's like, oh, whatever happens in there is none of my business. They're spreading both cheeks and letting the logs drop in the toilet, brother. At a minimum, they're leaking yellow fluid from the tip of their dick into the toilet. And they're, what's funny about it is they're probably trying to like hit the quiet spot on the toilet. You know, just to the left at the back of the toilet, but a little bit left of center, where when the piss hits, instead of like reflecting back it sort of like bends around the bowl so it turns into like a, a drizzle instead of a sprinkle i aim dead center i just know you never wear khakis that's all i'm going to say about that i'm a right side enjoyer that's fine i gotta imagine that it's like a, a left-handed right-handed sort of thing going on as well The poop bits aren't gross, but you're obsessed with them? Well, I think you're obsessed with them. I just talk about them. You're the one who seems to have it stick in your brain a little bit. I talk about poop and then I'm like, I ate a burger yesterday. You're like, hold on, go back to the poop stuff. Which one of us is obsessed, brother? Make it make sense. Mm. 
Nice try, though. Okay, a cheeseburger, extra pickles, maybe a little bit of poop on it. Oh, man. Gets me every time. You know what you've done, by the way? You've ruined your brain via the internet. There's still time, unless you're my age, you've still got some neuroplasticity. But like, you, you spend too much time on the internet where like everything is about sex somehow. Then when anybody talks about anything, they must have a fetish for that. So like you bring up poop a lot. Is there anything you want to tell us? Yeah, it's fucking, I'm bringing it up. That you're supposed to make jokes about things you know. I'm in the bathroom like 20 minutes a day. Dropping logs. I'm an expert, according to Malcolm Gladwell. Just because you jerk off to everything you're interested in, does it, I, I keep my interests there separate. I'm not writing, you know, NHL fanfic about, you know, enemies turned into lovers or something like that. I'm just watching the game. And then I'm logging off and eating a ham sandwich, you know? I don't need all of my interests to eventually come back to carnal desires. You're the scrambled one, brother. I think we're going to do the exact same thing. Put a little bit of poop on the sandwich. <laughs> Ham, two slices of cheese, yellow mustard, a little bit of poop. You're cooked. I can't believe I've only got two lives left. Cats, after they've bitten through uh, an electrical cord seven times. You know, we might as well. Why don't you take responsibility instead of gaslighting chat? I'm not responsible for your thoughts. Fucking Crunchyroll and your parents are responsible for your thoughts. I'm responsible for what I say. I'll take responsibility for that. I'll take ownership. I'll apologize when necessary. The way that you receive the pass, brother, I'm Patrick Mahomes out here. You run the route, the shit's hitting you between the numbers. If you fumble it, that's on you and your gloves as far as I'm concerned, okay? That's got nothing to do with me. That's not any of my business. Camel's cooked anyway. It's time. He's still cooked, whatever. Blame Android 18 for my cooked ass. Everybody's got their own cross to bear, okay? I've got the cross to bear that for some reason I have like PTSD from when Toad went into the de-evolution chamber in the Super Mario Brothers movie. And I still am teasing it apart bit by bit because it's still in there because when I rewatch the Matrix movies and in the Matrix 2, Agent Smith starts turning regular agents into Agent Smith by inserting his... Karate chop into their chest, and then they go, and then they turn into Agent Smith. Like, that still gives me the heebie-jeebies, you know, and it's the, the Toad stuff was like 1992 or something like that. Yeah, I know it bothers me. You know what bothers me the most is that they put Toad in the de-evolution chamber and he's like, no, don't put me in the de-evolution chamber. But then when, he's, when the de-evolution chamber is done, He's so cooked that he's got like the Goomba smile. Like he's actually happy he went through the de-evolution because there's not a shred of Toad, the person left in there. That shit is, that, it, I'm like, no, no. It would be better 
if he was like in the machine, but he was raging against the machine, if every once in a while a little bit of Toad's humanity popped out. But instead, he's like so fucking lobotomized that he's like, I love being a Goomba. I love being a Goomba. He's doing the dance in the elevator. That's true. He did still play the harmonica. He's still in there somewhere. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> they do give him the harmonica and they're like, Toad is home. There's some spark of Toad left in there. But Agent Smith it fucking overwrites him, man. I'm not, it takes a lot to get me to, you know, sympathize with the agents because those are bad dudes, man. But it's, it's, Smith is even worse. Banana. This is fine. This is fine. Sure. Trucker lady from Pee Wee got me. Yeah. Large March. I think it's a common one for our age. I think it got me as a kid, but for whatever reason, it never made it into, um, like, the adult brain. Like, I overrode it with something. Probably something poop-related, if I had to guess. Or the the uh, Judge Doom melting the dude in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Nowadays, the things that horrify kids in movies are like, oh, her fucking mom took away her iPad or something. Upvotes to the left. <laughs> Upvotes to the left. <laughs> Have you heard of the concept of yes day, by the way? Or is this something that's only relevant for parents? My kid's not old enough to be talking about yes day yet. The concept of it is that basically parents have to say no all the time. Because um, your kids want to do stuff that is either stupid or unfeasible or dangerous. Um, so you're always saying no. But for one day, you're like... Hey, we're going to say yes to everything. They did turn it into a movie on Netflix starring Jennifer Garner. Um, but it's kind of become like a real thing as well in the sense that people have seen it and then been like, we should do that. I will never be doing yes day. It just seems like I because I couldn't do it the in a way that would be authentic to the spirit of the bit because like my kid might be like can i have ice cream for lunch and i'd be like okay it's yes day you can have ice cream for lunch but then she might be like you know can i chop the vegetables for dinner and i would be like the fuck are you talking about you're three years old you think i'm going to give you a like a cleaver absolutely not but then if i say no it's like not yes day or like, oh, well, there's some exceptions to yes day. Well, then it's not yes day, man. My wife did yes day with the kids, but I refused to participate. I mean, enough's enough, brother. Because <laughs> the thing is, you, like, you might be like, well, you only say no for things that are like dangerous. And I'm like, that's like 80% of the shit that I say no to right now. My kid's like, can I ride not in the car seat? And I'm like, obviously not. You're either going to suffer an egregious injury or I'm going to get pulled over and go to prison. Like, there's no positive that comes out of this. Dude, that's such a good Squeaks or Ludwig idea. Yes day for chat. I'm not even going to dangle the carrot like it's going to happen with me. But you might be able to convince Squeaks to do it. I think you should bug Squeaks, okay? You should bug Squeaks and tell him, like, psyop. Don't tell him that it's from another community. 
Let's add him and see if he's here. He might be invisible. Celebrities like to lay low in this chat. I know you're out there. I fucking see you. Don't let him know that it's from this chat. Clips disabled. Mods, clips disabled. Just start every, like, 15 minutes. Just pepper in, hey, Squeaks, can we have a yes day? So you guys have to work together, because if too many people say it all at once, he's going to catch on. He's a smart guy. Because, honestly, Squeaks needs a little bit of blowback for ruining everybody's Twitch chat. People come out here... January 6th is mentioned in like every single chat, every single minute. Um, people come into my chat, call me like Pookie and stuff like that now. It's just driving me crazy. He deserves a little bit of blowback, okay? OMG, he does, which he didn't invent, but that's where I discovered it from. Yes, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get, we're gonna get him. <laughs> I was gonna say we're gonna get that fucker. Oh man. I know you already got a melon. I guess it. What, what, what happens? Let me look at this for a second. Two, two, two. No thanks. I'll take a coconut gun. Should have bought the sushi first. Should have held back, but you throw the punch. You know what I'm talking about, Outcast fans. How many subs for an NL yesterday? It will not happen. I say no for a good reason, because the stuff that you tell me to do, usually I don't want to do. <laughs> That's the point? I know. Why would I, why would I ever relent on that one? I don't want to do shit that I don't want to do. But it's yesterday? No the fuck it isn't yesterday, by the way. It is not in this house, so you will not catch me doing a yesterday. Unless Kate decides to do a yesterday for our kid, in which case I'll go along for the ride because I love my family. But I'll be like pissed the whole time. The whole time. And she's, I know at some point she's going to be like, what do I do? She wants to do something that I don't want to let her do. And I said, that's why we shouldn't have done yesterday in the first place. Just saying. I ain't doing yesterday. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I am not dumb. That is true. We will not be doing fucking yesterday this year. Anybody want a peanut? I'm not saying you have to say no on everything. Like I always say part of toddler parenting wisdom is sometimes you gotta like choose your battles, you know? If you try to win every battle, that's gonna be tough for you because every day is gonna be constant conflict. So some days you gotta be like, you know, I'm going to get you to brush your teeth nicely, but in return, like, yeah, sure, we'll read, like, three extra books or whatever. I think I got to copy what our opponent did there. But we will not be doing yesterday. I'll tell you that for free. This is the last round anyway. We risk it all. <laughs> Fuck it, we ball.
We're gonna win. No sweat. No sweat, brother. Easiest 10 piece of my life. It was over before it even began. Play me again. <laughs> Are you hearing my stomach, bro? It's going crazy out here. I'm hungry as fuck, dude. You know why? Hannah, Hannah Corbin played the nine-minute version of Jungle Land on her 30-minute classic rock ride today. My ass, I know it's a Louis C.K. from Conan bit, but my ass was out of the saddle going, Ooh! 